Hi guys, if you clicked on this thumbnail then you are here for the Nike Alpha Fly end of life review. Here we are. This shoe uh, was bought almost two years ago and has 400 something miles on the clock. Now, this last weekend it went and did the Great North Run half marathon and I believe that to be its last competitive outing. Now, I've had many a great run in this shoe and I thought I would reflect on its journey to maybe better people's understanding of this super shoe. Uh, maybe they are on the edge of buying a shoe themselves, the successor to this, even this shoe is still available to buy. So I thought I would give my lifetime's review of this shoe. This shoe was developed for Kipachoge and his two sub two hour marathon attempt which he completed. Uh, the problem was it was soon banned from elite competition um, and you, we didn't really see these again on, on his feet. However, it made them commercially uh, viable. They, they were made available to the general public and soon after we started to see them out on the road at road races, at park runs even, half marathons, these sorts of shoes started to appear. But they were expensive to the tune of about £280 and to most running muggles like myself that was just too much money. You know, Most of us around the 1, 150 mark is about where we like to go for shoes so 280 is almost twice the price and it is ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous night. Get your act together. If that proves that this isn't a sponsored video, then nothing will. All right, so how did I get these if these were £280? Well, after about a year of these being out and spotting a few of these out and about, um, the there's whispers of the successor to this shoe. Only the whispers. Uh, but at which point, these shoes start to come down in price. Uh, I think they'd, they'd got about 60 70% off even. And then, if you're a bit savvy with discount codes on certain websites, you can get them much cheaper. And before you knew it, the, the Alpha Fly, the sort of flagship super shoe, had become cheaper than some of its uh, alternatives, such as the, the Vapor Fly, which was out roughly the same time. Uh, the Vapor Fly is sort of a smaller version of the same shoe and was about £180 at the time. When these came down in price and with discount codes, they made them suddenly cheaper than the Vapor Fly. That created a bit of a massive surge in these shoes being visible out at road races and such. That's when I pounced and I bought these shoes. Now because these shoes had already been out for a little while, there were rumblings about um, if they were durable enough, if they were robust enough, how long did they last, how many miles would you get. This was all unknown because the very, very, very first thing you notice when you get these out of the box is that it's knitted. They are essentially see-through. It's knitted. It's almost like cotton-thin material. Um, and just around here, and it, it, it's got a little bit of branding so that says uh, Atom Knit, right? So um, looking at the shoe, you, you would assume that it wasn't very robust at all. In fact, it's so transparent you could sieve stuff through it. And you see your socks, so bear that in mind. There was also early reports that the AirPods that are in the toe section here were popping after a certain amount of miles. So that led me to be very protective over my new purchase. Um, so I would only wear them when I wanted to have an effort over a distance, um, or if I was in a, a road race or something like that, something where performance mattered. I wouldn't even take them out in the rain. I wouldn't even take them out in the damp. I was very protective over this shoe at first because obviously I didn't want them to get ruined and waste that money. These, these were the ones that I would pull out when I wanted to do a fast time. So when you first get this shoe, uh, you get them in the box, the night box, and you open it up and inside the night box there's a, a slinky little bag and you're made to feel like they're very, very special. Okay, and you get them out and you feel them, they're light as a feather and they've got these funky little AirPods on and laces that are ribbed and the knit and the foam and you can see the carbon plate underneath you you absolutely know it's there rather than just taking the manufacturer's word for it and the very first thing you do is you put them on your feet in your own house right you just put them on uh, pretty sure 
Everyone that's ever bought one of these has just taken them out of the box, put them on their feet, and just bobbed from one toe to the next. Oh, these feel a bit weird. And they do. When you're walking around, these feel odd. A combination of the sponginess and the foam. You feel like you're sitting on like a, uh, on a sponge, essentially. It's a very soft foam in the heel here. Very soft. And then when you do lift up onto your toes, these AirPods kick in. And it is very much a case of uh, springiness. A nice little snap to the toe lift. Uh, and, and then inevitably you go out and go for a run up and down the road, okay? Just to see how they are, because they're so different to regular shoes, it's such an odd sensation at first when you run in them. A lot of people are like, oh, I hate it, I hate it, I don't like it, but then after a little while it grows on you. So, these are touted as giving you an extra one or two percent in terms of performance. Now, everyone's a little bit skeptical about this at first. I was. Are they really that good? Or do they give you that extra oomph? Is there an advantage to wearing them? The very fact that they were stopped being used in competition suggests yes, suggests that that science has already been proved. The fact that Kipichoge did in fact get the sub two hour marathon and he's not yet done it since in regular shoes suggests yes, these do give you that extra. So how did they do for me? How did, how did, how did they work for me? Now I'm in a road running league and each year we have X amounts of races over a set of different distances. So I have a 5 mile race, a 6 mile race, a 10k race, an 8 mile race, etc. And I wore these for every single one. Now the very first one was an 8 miler and I hadn't had these very long. So popped them on my feet, showed up at the 8 miler and ran it. Of course I blew the time away from my previous time but because it was eight miles and these had not yet been broken in I encountered what could only be described as some of the worst arch rub that I'd ever had. Now this isn't necessarily the shoe's fault I am something of an overpronator and but I'm also someone who likes a good super shoe and they don't really make super shoes in support shoes, they, they just don't do that. So I do have my support shoes, but on race day I like to wear a super shoe, a shoe that I feel makes me faster. You just don't get that same feeling from a support shoe that, you, that, that has all the extra support in the arch and the plastic around the side. It, they're heavier, they don't have any of the carbon or the sexy foam, there's just there's no advantage to wearing them, they're there just to support you. Whereas the super shoe, for short bursts, for the odd race here and there, you can just deal with the overpronation problem. Now the, the thing that I noticed is that these have almost no midsole, okay? It's, uh, it's risen off the ground, it's narrow in the midfoot, and the sides of the shoe are of this atom knit stuff that is almost non-existent in terms of support so there's almost zero support from the shoe doesn't matter how tight you do them up inevitably if you're an overpronator look at the shoe it's even it's even looks like it's leaning that way they will lean in um, when you're at full flight you don't notice this when you're you're running quite fast you don't notice the overpronation effect it's when you're running distance and you start to fatigue when you start to tire your gait starts to tire too and that's when that's when that creeps in um, and as a result it got me in the arches because this is pushing up into my arch while the foot is going down I'm almost bearing all my uh, weight my every time I impact is going into the arch um, and so yeah, I had two big blisters and at that point learned a valuable lesson about overpronation. Over that season of running, I went on to knock the tops off all of my personal bests uh, at the, in the road running league. So we're talking the 5 mile, the 6 mile, the 10k, the 7, the, all of it, I just did them all. Uh, alternating in the Leicester half marathon and I got my half marathon personal best also. Um, what I did throughout that season, I was having a good, a good running year um, and I was going to park run every single week and I was making efforts to get my personal best every week. I didn't always get it, but during that year I think I hit it 12 times and I got it down from sort of the mid 19 minute mark down to 17.52, uh, all wearing these shoes. Now I do have other super shoes and occasionally I take them and I run a park run in them. Um, I have the uh, 
uh, vapor fly, which is the sort of little brother of, of the alpha fly. Um, but because it's missing sort of the, the pods in the toe and it's a little bit lower down on the foam here, um, and I've got used to running in these, this just doesn't make me go as fast. It's as simple as that. Now, I probably need, do need to spend a little bit more time in those because I've had them for nearly as long as I've had these and I've probably not even got 100 miles out of these, but I've got 400 miles in these. So they have assisted me in getting some of the very best times I have ever had in my entire life. And to get those times at 42, 43 years old is amazing. I've been running for years and now I am getting the best times of my entire life in shoes like this. And it's not an accident. These do give you something. Granted, it's not necessarily all the shoe. It encourages you to run faster. It makes you want to run faster. And psychologically, it makes you think you've got it. So you add all of those little things up together and it does make for a great race day. So after 400 miles, why would I consider these end of life? A couple of reasons. First of all, uh, a, a common uh, characteristic of a road running shoe is uh, the tread is normally quite slick. Now the problem with a shallow base tread on the outsole is that it wears quite quickly, it becomes even slicker. What, what little tread there is there will just get ground right off. As you can see, that's, that suggests that my overpronation is, is sort of, because I uh, run a bit goofy foot in, it's, it's all sort of worn on one side. Um, having a lot of foam on show can also create this instance where stones stick in and then they stay in and then with every foot strike after that it goes click 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 so just a little thing to consider um, but I think overall the mm, the biggest reason why I've considered these the end of life is the pop and the snap and the all the things that it claims to give you um, start to reduce over time the foam starts to give and the carbon plate starts to, its rigidity it starts to reduce and the, the, even the AirPods, it just starts to fatigue all around. And what you noticed you were getting in, in those first few hundred miles starts to taper off and you're no longer getting the full benefit of the carbon foam combination. Now, would I buy this shoe again? Uh, absolutely, yeah. If I got it for roughly the same price, I would definitely buy this exact shoe again. Um, however, there have been subsequent advancements since this and the replacement is now widely available. However, we're back to square one where the shoe is still at £280. It has not yet come down in price once since it's been out. Uh, they're not green anymore, they're like a garish pink. You can get other colours but that's uh, they generally have one main colour and it was green in this iteration of shoe and then it now it's this garish garish pink and I would absolutely give that shoe a try if it in fact came down in a similar way in price to, to what these were. Um, these are going to be put aside and used very occasionally. Uh, they're not going to be pushed to the front. I think I need to get a little bit more wear out of my vapor flies uh, before I start buying more super shoes but um, yeah I would you can still buy these and if you're tempted by these if, then you can get some second hand as uh, quite a few people don't get on with them and are keen to sell them on and there are people that buy shoes just for the sake of buying shoes and um, will only get a couple of hundred miles and so you could probably get a good pair second hand as well for a very reasonable price um, but uh, yeah I, I am very up for trying the, the pink ones, the new ones, to see in fact that if there are any benefit and I would love to get a fresh pair on my feet so I can then get back into running those great times again. So to conclude, I have got a lot of fond memories in this shoe, in these shoes. Um, they have enabled me to get some of the very best times in my entire life. As you approach your mid 40s, to be still smashing those times, to be still taking time off, uh, it's facilitated and enabled by technology advancing as much as it is the training that you do. So I want to look at, back at these shoes with fondness. When I look back at the photos of me running, like this one, when I got my 1752 apart run, and be like, yeah, I remember when. 
these shoes will go on my shelf. I don't think I'm just going to throw them out. They're, they're like a little trophy. They're, they're weathered very well, and with a good cleanup, they'll still look quite fantastic. If it wasn't for the fact that the foam and the carbon and the, the AirPods have just fatigued that much, I might still be wearing them. But the wear and tear is obvious, and they are due for replacement. And if I can get my hands on a pair of recently priced Alpha Fly 2s, then I will give you another review. And I will buy them, I will run in them, and I will tell you honestly what they're like too. Remember, my reviews are not sponsored. They're not in any way biased. It's based completely on experience. And I think that's more important than just getting tech specs and, and low-grade analysis off of just a few runs. Until that shoe has finished for you, you will never have a complete picture of what it can do for you and your performance. So that's what I bring you in my reviews. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, please give the channel a subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Martin.